Everybody has car insurance, at least if you're driving on the roads, you should have car insurance. But do you understand what every single coverage covers? Boring! Oh, no! The battery! In this video, I'm going to break down everything that you need to know about auto insurance. Stay tuned. All right, so a little bit about myself. My name is Nick Saka, and I have been an insurance agent for the last four years. I own two insurance agencies here in Las Vegas, Nevada. And I will start by saying that before I go into every single coverage, I'm going to explain all the coverages here in Las Vegas, which is pretty standard in comparison to the insurance coverages available in all 50 states. Now, every state is different, and some of my information today may be outdated if you're watching this at some point in the future. So that's my disclosure at first, but ultimately you will want to reach out to one of your local insurance agents to break down exactly how this relates to your specific state. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. So the very first coverage that you must have by law if you are driving on the roads is bodily injury and, and some states, do, they'll abbreviate it as BI. What bodily injury covers is that if you are driving on the road and you cause an accident, meaning you, hurt, you create an accident, you're at fault, and you hurt the other party driving, bodily injury is what the insurance company will pay out in, in the claim total for the other party's medical bills and injuries, okay? Now, there are typically two numbers. The first number represents what the insurance company will pay per person in an incident, and the second number represents what will be paid out per incident. Now, here in Nevada, the state minimums a couple years ago used to be 1530. That means 15,000 per person and 30,000 per incident. But the, uh, the coverage limits have increased since then. It is now 25,000, 50,000 as our state minimum. Most people go with the state minimum, but does that mean that they should be driving with the state minimum? Let's go ahead and dive into that. You typically want to have enough coverage to protect you and your income and your assets in the event that you are at fault in an incident like that. Now, this can happen literally. You could be driving and pulling into your neighborhood and you get a phone call from your mom so you look away from the road for one second and you hit a family that's walking their baby and you maybe worst case scenario injure the family and guess who is liable and may get sued for almost everything they own or even don't own in that type of scenario. Just because you don't own your house or a business or have money in the bank doesn't mean that someone can't go after your income, your future your future wages and you know things such as tax liens and and wage garnishments are all in play in the event that you don't have enough liability coverage so depending on how much coverage you think that you will need i always recommend to all of my customers to at least have 250 and 500,000 and that's whether you're wealthy or not that's whether you you have things to lose and assets to lose or you don't have anything to lose because again, lawyers can go after your wages. They can go after things that you don't even own yet and put you in a real bad financial situation in the event that you did not have enough coverage with bodily injury. And so make sure that you have sufficient bodily injury coverage and you're not just rolling around with the state minimums because that may not be enough the second liability coverage that you will see on your insurance policy is property damage, also known as PD. What is property damage? Well, it's just like it sounds. You, this is what you would be liable for in the event that you cause an accident and you damage another person's property. This can be their car. This can be somebody driving into my office right now. <laughs> this can be you pulling into a uh, driving into a house, that is all covered under property damage. Now, the state minimum here in Las Vegas is only $20,000. Here's the problem with only having $20,000 worth of coverage. Let's just say that hypothetically you're, you're driving and you spill coffee on your lap and you rear end three cars that are waiting at a light. 
you hit one car, that car hits the car in front of it, and that car hits the front of it. And let's just say hypothetically, one of those cars, cars is a Mercedes. One of those cars is a Tesla. Now this is obviously an extreme situation, but do you really think that 20,000 is gonna cover you in the event that you caused that type of an accident? And it won't. So I always recommend at least having minimum $50,000 in property damage coverage, at least at the bare bones minimum. But really truthfully, you want at least 100,000. That's my ultimate recommendation because with all the ro with all the cars driving on the roads today, you have Teslas that are 60,000 used. You have BMWs that are 40,000 used. You have Lamborghinis, Rolls Royces and all sorts of high-end cars that are worth a lot more than just a minimum of 20,000 and so you will want to make sure that you have enough coverage because in the event that you cause an accident, you cause $70,000 worth of damages and let's just say hypothetically you only have $50,000 worth of coverage, guess who's on the hook for that 20,000? You are. And that can come in the that can come as your assets being on the hook, that can come as your, you know, the home that you own or it can come as future wages as they can be garnished depending on the severity and the uniqueness of every single situation. So property damage coverage is certainly something that you will want to make sure you have enough coverage in. Here in Nevada, there's also another coverage called medical payments coverage. If I'm not mistaken, this is pretty standard across the US and medical payments covers exactly what it sounds like it covers and that is your medical bills. Now this comes uh, would kick in whether you are at fault or not in a claim or in a accident and it really is designed to cover you and your passengers in the event that you cause an accident and you're at fault and so if you cause that accident obviously the other person's insurance company isn't going to cover it because you're at fault and so you're liable for not only your medical bills but your passengers medical bills in the event that you got hurt in that situation now Health insurance does, may also cover your health bill, your medical bills and injuries in the event that you're involved in an accident, but you'll really want to double check with your health insurance provider to make sure that they cover auto accidents because there are a few that don't. Now, again, this covers you and your passengers in the event that you're at fault in an accident and they can come in, in quantities and amounts of either 1,000 all the way as high as 100,000 per person per incident and so medical payments here in Nevada is not required it's completely optional and so depending on the state that you're in it may either be required or optional as well and so that's what it covers and so it'll be up to you to figure out if that coverage is necessary for you the next coverage I want to go over is what you have all probably understood as full coverage now what's full coverage Full coverage is covering your vehicle in the event that you're in an accident. Now, if you finance your car, you're required by the financing company to carry full coverage on your vehicle. Now, why is that? Because if you go and you wreck your car and you still have a loan on it, they need their money. So they're gonna seek the insurance company to get that money. And so full coverage co covers two different things. There's comprehensive and collision. I'll start with collision. Collision is the coverage, uh, is the deductible that you would pay first before the insurance company would cover any other, any other bills or damages. Now, collision is typically when you, the best way to explain it is colliding into another car, a moving, uh, a moving incident where your car is damaged, somebody else's car is damaged and you're at fault. Because again, if, if the other party is at fault, then their insurance company would typically cover your vehicle. But if you are at fault, then that's what deductible you're gonna have to pay in order to get your car covered. Now comprehensive, on the other hand, is a little bit different. Your car is stationary and it doesn't usually involve another car. So let's just say uh, comprehensive will cover things like your car getting stolen, Comprehensive covers things like windshield damage. Uh, you walk out and you see your car gets keyed by you know a crazy ex-girlfriend or something like that, or your tires get slashed or whatnot. But you know, comprehensive is something that you know even if you're uh, if you back into a light pole or something like that, it usually doesn't involve another car. Uh, is what would be covered under comprehensive. Now, comprehensive is actually pretty cheap, and so 
I always recommend, you know, the standard deductibles for collision and comprehensive are about $500. Uh, but I recommend comprehensive being at uh, where, being at 250 because the thought of paying $250 versus paying $500 or $1,000 to fix some min minor damages is kind of hefty. And so uh, pick your deductibles as you please. But ultimately, collision and comprehensive are what protect your car in the event that you cause an accident and you're at fault in an accident. And here in Nevada, uh, whether you know you let's just say you get hit by a hit and run and uh and your and your car is damaged now and they they drive off right your car would also be covered under collision and comprehensive you would of course have to pay the deductible uh and that's what would get your car fixed in a scenario like that but of course uh, i know some other states you know check with your local agent uh depending on where you're at have other coverages or they're named a little bit differently but uh, you can go ahead and check that with again your local agent Another thing I do want to bring up is that all of your valuables that are inside of your car, let's just say you keep your laptops, your camera equipment, your DJ equipment, whatever it is that you have that may be of value. If that's if your car gets broken into and your stuff gets stolen, the only thing that would be covered is your windshield damage. The actual valuables inside your car, at least here in Nevada, would be covered under a homeowner's policy of personal property or a renter's insurance policy if you're not a homeowner. That is not covered under your auto insurance policy, so that's something to definitely be, be aware of that you've gotta have renter's insurance or homeowner's insurance if you want your personal property to be covered in the event of a theft claim. All right, now there is another coverage. It's a pretty important coverage, and that is called UM, UIM, and what that means is uninsured, underinsured motorist coverage. Now, you've probably heard of it. Now, what it covers here in Nevada is your medical bills and your injury bills in the event that you're in an accident and you get hurt in that accident and either the party responsible doesn't have enough insurance, i.e. underinsured, or they were uninsured and they didn't have insurance and they were riding dirty, right? Now, if they were to hit you and take off and do a hit and run, this coverage is what your insurance company would provide you in the event that you got hurt in that situation. Now, here in Nevada, uh, it is it, it is an optional coverage, meaning it's not required by, by the state, but in some situations, it's really good coverage to have. Um, and it also covers uh, pain and suffering. And so if you wanted to get a lawyer involved to have them cover your, uh, you know, so let's just say you're out of work in a situation like that. This coverage would cover, uh, would get essentially you, you paid and in other cases get the lawyer paid and get your medical bills paid as well. Uninsured, underinsured, if you have health insurance, some people prefer not to have it, some people prefer to have it. Uh, it ultimately comes down to you, so choose wisely on whether or not you feel that you would like to keep that coverage on your policy or not. Uninsured, underinsured also covers you in the amounts very similar to how bodily injury covers you. The first amount uh, here in Nevada is $25,000, second amount $50,000. Remember, per person, per incident, it's it's listed on your policies the same exact way as bodily injury and so you can opt to have coverage for uninsured underinsured uh, at $25,000, $50,000 per incident all the way as high as $250,000 to $500,000 per incident. So the choice is yours on exactly how much coverage you feel is necessary to cover you. All right, so the next two coverages I won't spend too much time on because they are pretty common sense and that is roadside assistance and rental car coverage. Roadside assistance covers you from the obvious things such as your car breaks down in the middle of the road, uh, you lock your keys in your car, you uh, run out of gas, um, all sorts of different scenarios where you need a tow. Roadside assistance will cover you for any of those scenarios. Now, half the insurance companies that I see will offer it where they pay that situation in full. So meaning your car breaks down, you need a tow, they will cover that situation. You don't have to pay anything up front. The other half of insurance companies from what I see is will do a reimbursement of anywhere from up to $100 to $150 where 
you you find any vendor to use and you take a you pay for it up front you take a clear photo of the receipt you send that to your current agent and they will get you refunded within seven to ten business days and that's roadside assistance i highly recommend it because it's so cheap to have that it's just a no-brainer to be honest because you're better safe than sorry you're better having off you're better off having that coverage versus not having it whenever you need it and so um, the other coverage is rental car uh rental car coverage or rental car reimbursement. And this coverage covers you in the event that you're involved in a claim, your car needs to get to the shop, it needs to be worked on because it's not drivable. And, uh, and this is where your insurance company will cover your rental car expenses um, during while your car is getting fixed. Now it's not just, it's, you're not covered for a rental car just whenever you feel like it. It's only if your car is involved in a claim and it needs to be worked on. Uh, rental car coverage is completely, I mean, both of these coverages are optional and rental car coverage uh, is usually anywhere from an extra 10, I mean, uh, anywhere from five to additional $15 a month, depending on how much of a rental car you want to be covered. Now, if you have a backup car or if you're if, if if you don't mind doing uber and lyft while your main car is getting worked on then you're probably don't need rental car coverage but if you don't have those options then you might want to consider having it so the choice is completely yours and so that's roadside assistance and rental car coverage so that's it that's the main coverage that you need to know about with auto insurance and at the end of the day, what my biggest takeaway for all of you is, is to protect your assets. In the event that you don't have enough coverage from a liability standpoint, you want to make sure that you are protecting the things that you are working so hard to build. Like what's the point of buying multiple pieces of real estate? What's the point of getting wealthy and having a lot of money in the bank if you can use it, if you can lose it literally just like that? And so you've got to protect all the things that you are working hard to accumulate in this life and you don't want to lose it in an instant, in a blink of an eye. You know, literally so many different things can happen on the roads and you want to make sure that you are protecting yourself and your legacy and your family from all sorts of financial hardships. So that's my ultimate recommendation for you. I hope that you got some value out of this video. I hope that you understand insurance a little bit better and you can make an educated decision on which coverages mean the most to you and which ones are even worth having. And so if you got some value out of this video, do me a favor and smash the like button for me and subscribe for all things insurance, entrepreneurship, and self-development. And follow me on my social medias as well. And until next time, have a blessed day.